He has traveled the world with a 500 pound photo studio. Why? We're about to find out. This is Text to Nation. I'm Fred Fishkin, and with us is acclaimed National Geographic photographer David Lichwager. Hi, David. Hello. <clears throat> What you have spent years and years photographing are some very shy subjects, and the result is a beautiful new book titled Octopus, Seahorse, Jellyfish. Tell us about this wonderful project and book, your photographs, and the, and the accompanying essays. <clears throat> well, it's a <clears throat> product of uh, 12 years of work, and it's a compilation of uh, sort of eight different uh, projects. Uh, the, <clears throat> the essays are uh, derivative of uh, three different National Geographic uh, features. Um, so it's, it's bringing together uh, in the resources that were produced by you know, 12 years of work. Um, so it's, it was, a, it's a great opportunity to, it, you know, the, it's sort of, it's a monograph, you know, the, the definition, which is sort of a close examination of a, of a, of a set of work. Um, so that's, uh, that was just, the last couple of years trying to bring that together. Um, so why, why choose these species? You know, I always wanted to take pictures of things that the world has a use for. Um, and so I guess I, I don't want to go out and photograph some, you know, weird thing that actually nobody's interested in. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm drawn to, but also what other people might be drawn to. Uh, and I also need to figure out how to make a living. Um, and these, these three things, they were done the principal portion of them were done for the magazine, for National Geographic magazine. And the way my process works with them um, is to be able to, you know, sort of in advance explain myself about why I want to do this, you know, because I want them to be. Uh, to sponsor me to go out in the world and explore the diversity of octopus and seahorses and jellyfish. So I have to be able to articulate why I think uh, others would be interested in that. Um, and in that um, exploration, um, over and over again, I find that, you know, these groups of creatures are fantastic. And they present some unique challenges to, to photograph as well, right? From what I understand with the, with the octopus, getting the eyes open, <laughs> you, you, not so easy. Um, well, if you just sort of hit the pause button for a second and think about um, if you shine a bright light in somebody's eyes, they're going to turn away and their pupils are going to constrict and it's not necessarily going to be fun. Um, so um, turn the lights out, use a dim red light to be able to focus with, and then things change. Um, so, I mean, recognizing, you know, what, what a creature is um, going to respond to um, is, I think, the solution, you know, uh, you know, what would you like? 
um, if I was taking your picture. I mean, I can, if I was, you know, I, I do take lots of pictures of, of people as well. And I then I apologize in advance for the, the bright light of the strobe that models what it's going to look like so that I can, you know, see in advance. Um, but since I'm not able to communicate that apology to an octopus, I have to just change my technique. Well, Olivia Judson writes in, in the book that octopuses uh, are like us, that they return your gaze. So tell us what some of your experiences were here. <clears throat> uh, there's this <clears throat> series of pictures of an octopus in the book. <clears throat> And it's it's uh, its common name is an algae octopus, <clears throat> and it was in the Solomon Islands. And I mean, it, <clears throat> you know, this creature has and there's like it's about it covers about eight pages in a book. And as you and I just looked at this the other day. <clears throat> And it's, it was completely on purpose to, to design it this way, that it's the same octopus, but you wouldn't recognize it from page to page um, because it has such a uh, broad, uh, diverse way of sort of showing itself to the world. It's like, it starts out, you know, a little tiny ball. Um, and then at the end, it's this puff of black ink as it squirts away. Um, so over the course of about an hour, it showed me half a dozen different ways of being uh, that I wouldn't, I, you know, this is not, I, it's the same individual, but you'd never know it if you looked at without that context, if you didn't know that it was the same individual. The portable studio, <laughs> tell, tell us about that and why you felt it was necessary because very often if you see, you know, I guess m many of us don't realize what goes into it, but uh, marine life photography, you know, you, you just envision people in scuba gear with the camera, et cetera. You created a studio to bring along. Tell me why. Um, it's the way I was trained as a portrait photographer. Um, so I like to see you know, I like to see the, the, the creature, the individual. So that's, that's what I'm trying to show. Um, you know, the sort of, the sort of loving particularity um, of a particular creature. Um, I, I'm, I really want to see how this creature is made. Um, I'm, I'm just really drawn to all the edges, all the details, um, the, the, ga you know, the gaze of an octopus. I mean, seahorses are highly visual creatures as well. Um, jellyfish, some of them actually have eyes too, but they don't, they're so different. They don't have, there's, I think there's zero possibility of mutual regard with a jellyfish, but they're also incredibly fascinating. So that's, I, you know, I'm a little lost for words to explain myself about my fascination with jellyfish. I have no idea what an octopus actually thinks of me. Um, and I probably think that a seahorse really doesn't care about me, but we're all actually connected in some way. So that's interesting. But the octopus, there is a connection there, I suppose then, right? You know, <coughs> I think there is. Um, you know, back to this octopus, this algae octopus that, that I spent some time with. You know, he did all these, he, she, I don't know what it was. 
whether it was male or female, but, <clears throat> you know, it was a fantastic performance. I got, you know, eight pages of lovely pictures. And then at the end, it just kind of seemed like it got bored and it just, you know, squirted ink, spoiled the water, and it was time to put, to let them go and put them back in the ocean. Um, so it, the, the creature sort of, it, you know, decided it was done. And so it squirted some ink unprovoked and just spoiled the water. And it was like, we're done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, okay. So you had worked in, in fashion photography for, for some years, an assistant to the famous Richard Avedon. Uh, how and why did you change your focus so dramatically? Let's put it that way, too. Um, it wasn't really a plan. Uh, I guess it sort of, it happened 35 years ago or so. Um, I was given an opportunity to uh, make a group of pictures for the Nature Conservancy that were, the principal reason was to show endangered species to a broader public to raise money for habitat conservation. Um, and that was, you know, it was, it was an opportunity to, to see, um, share, participate in the beauty of the natural world. And that sort of stuck. Um, and so that's, it wasn't a plan. It was sort of a natural evolution of what was possible. And I sense through this book and, and the really magical images, close up, the detail, unbelievable, that you're trying to say something to us. To, to the readers, you and I suppose National Geographic. What, what do you want us to know? <clears throat> I, I, mean, I don't know what this idea of a formal portrait, um, if one succeeds in, in making a good portrait, um, that people really connect to. It's like maybe there's this possibility of the subject is, is presenting themselves to the camera. The viewer is taking this in. So it's like you could sort of think that you were generating this process of mutual regard. Um, I have no idea whether, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that by using sort of overt, you know, anthropocentric mechanism of, you know, the gaze of a seahorse or an octopus or just the spectacle of a jellyfish will create this sense of, of regard for the diversity of life. I guess that's it. Just trying to show that the world is a beautiful place and it's not used up and that there is uh, uh, beauty matters, I guess. So 12 years when it went into this, any thoughts? Do you, or do you think at this point about what's next or do you kind of breathe for a while? <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't breathe because I got to make a living um, or I have to breathe more, I breathe into it, so to speak, and keep going. Any thoughts about what you're going to be photographing next or will it be more, more of these? Uh, wonderful I'm work, creatures. I'm working on a 
a project about the deep sea. Um, and that's really interesting. Um, and also, you know, I, <clears throat> I was washing some lettuce earlier today and I got a caterpillar off it, off of the, the lettuce and I'm looking forward to photographing it when it uh, turns into a moth. Wonderful. Well, congratulations once again. The book is titled Octopus, Seahorse, Jellyfish from National Geographic Books. David Litschwager, thank you so much for spending time with us. Thanks a lot.